Welcome to Samba Cup, Czech Republic, end of May 2024. It's my first time here. I somehow managed to ignore this competition for a long time, although it developed into a largest F5J event in Europe with up to 140 participants although this year we only have like 128 I think <laughs> it's also my first time in rural Czech Republic and I find it quite interesting so we are now looking to the east and all around is uh, what looks like flatland it's rising to the west slightly but this is deceiving so we are on the top of a plateau almost 500 meters above sea level and just behind uh, to the north is a valley uh, also on the you see behind the camp the other side there's a valley and the other there's another ridge over there and this confused me greatly because it's not a landscape I'm used to and I had a look at uh, Wikipedia last night we are on the top of what's called Bohemian Massif and looks like it's a very thick sediment layer from long ago that flowing water on the surface managed to drag out all these valleys uh, quite steep uh, and well hidden if you look from this level so on the way here I even went uh, drove to one of the villages around here which was, which was called Shirokidol which means like a wide valley and the width of the valley there was maybe one slightly above one kilometer so the valleys here are a little more like canyons uh, narrow and steep and this is why you can't really see them so for example just looking over there so there's a, this house is already on the down slope and the trees behind it are already on the other side of the valley that's how narrow these things are also the tree line here looks like a very good place to start soaring especially in these easterly winds that we have but behind it is again a quite sharp drop of 50 meters or so <coughs> so if you try to go really low over those trees they might suck you down behind into the valley so it's a trap So we are looking at 14 best pilots and this flight is now blessed with a bit of sun which was not the case this morning we flew most of the last round uh, in overcast conditions barely any thermals <coughs> but now sun is out and they will try as slow as they can whoa it's getting noisy. Everyone super low. Not really sure where to focus. So we have just a slight breeze into my back right now, so these trees look very tempting. And these top pilots being as good as they are, they look like they will make it.
there's also a drone in there somewhere taking closer look at what's happening there. Uh, I'm pretty sure those will be interesting shots. All 14 of them in the same place in the sky. Let's hope there are no mid-air collisions. But for now it looks good. <coughs> Quite wide area is working fine. And I don't see really anyone in trouble right now. Bah ouais, je sais. Ça Mais euh, ça monte. Hein, donc Regarde, pour ça, devant, je trouve que c'est mieux. Ok, ben, bah, vas-y, serre ton virage dans le cul. D'accord. Je ramène devant. Je trouve aucun là. Ok. Inverse ta spirale et tout. Voilà. Vas-y, dynamique-moi ça. C'est bon. Ok. Ça coupe pas combien Le no, no très bas. Et euh, si c'est pas le plus bas. À droite, euh, ça coupe bas. Hein. Euh, T'as coupé très bas. Hein. Ouais, je pense, ouais. L'option de gauche est pas mal, non Oui, si tu fais quelque chose, tu vas sur la gauche. Mais euh, c'est la moyenne C'est plus loin que. À, à gauche, c'est mieux. Hein. C'est plus loin que. Attends, Donc, ouvre attends, 30 sur la gauche. gauche. Si tu veux avant, ça ne sera pas pire. Ouais, c'est ça. Non, à gauche, c'est mieux. Ok, vas-y à gauche. Et tu te branches. Ouais. Ah, allez, allez. Enfin, toi, tu prends un peu de vitesse dans le sac et tu, tu rattrapes tout. Nickel. Allez. Je fais un tour comme ça. Allez, ouais. Mais nickel. Magnifique. C'est mieux. Ouais, bon. Now I also see at least two birds that joined the thermal at the top. Or maybe even three. Now everyone is already pretty high and relatively far away. I see that at least one pilot decided to close the distance to the starting field or the corridor, which kind of makes sense here because if you hit a downdraft far out there, there's no telling well where you will land. You don't see your landing area and then searching the plane can be a pain.
So this guy is now the closest, playing it safe. And this is maybe a good time to talk a bit about motor restart capability and saving your plane. So this is really a uh, dynamic place as far as terrain goes and one might think that this feature is really handy but on the other side I still fly without it because this prevents me from doing stupid things and making stupid decisions in the air that would likely result in loss of a model and potentially some damage to some third-party property. But if you have motor restart capability then you're free to do stupid decisions because you can save yourself. But still we saw people climbing those trees and walking from far behind them retrieving their planes. So either they also d flew without those, uh, without that feature, and still made stupid decisions, or they opted not to use it. So what I'm trying to say is, having a way out of trouble gives you more incentive to to try dangerous things and I don't really like that personally so everyone is pretty high now and it's just uh, landing game and waiting for the time to pass from how far are we? Five, five minutes and a half to go still so not much to do but wait It will be fun to check the starting heights from these planes because numbers will be higher than what it looked like um, on the start. So as I said, the rain is rising to the west and just from the start corridor over to those trees, I think there's at least 10 meters of uh, ground rising so those guys that were just barely above the field would still have like 15 20 maybe 25 meters of start height
Even the birds are now having fun. And as we are in end of May and all the birds have nests full of hungry chicks, it was so fun to listen to all of the bird noises around in the camping area. There were sparrows flying around, swallows, and there was a kestrel nest just uh, in the top of the tree uh, across the valley. And that was always like a bunch of noises when the parents brought in new food. minutes to go so it's landing pattern time and I'm standing just at the end of the corridor I'm hoping I'm not black blocking anyone's landing path so there are really no good spots for me to stand if I don't want to stand in the middle of the field which I don't want to. Okay, that was it for the first flight. Now let's see what happens in the second one. So I found this tractor trail and managed to move further downwind without doing too much damage to the bees around me. And you can see how much higher I am. Just standing next to this manure pile that you saw from the previous flight. And that's giving off plenty of thermals, I'm sure. So I now expect pretty much the same kind of flight as before, uh, but instead of above me and away from me, pilots will fly towards me. And let's see how that looks like. What's the time? 45 seconds to start. Go for this kind of angle. Thanks. 
10 seconds to go. There's about one second of delay from sound. split in two groups one is just in front of the field and the other is behind the field so the starting corridor I mean not as low as before maybe or it looks different from this side okay so now everyone is downwind Already in good air. Someone hit the house there. Not sure if I got that. Just there. So even if you have motor restart, you still can't judge the depth and do this kind of problems. I hope everything turned out well. I don't remember there was anyone parked behind the house. But there are now more problems here. Uh, what's happening under behind there? So this doesn't look as simple as it did before. And there's at least one more having problems, but he's at least in front of the trees, so he's safe. here and I hear some servos overhead and it's the manure pile that's making terminals I'm telling you one is getting a bit more intense so one good thing about this gentle slope is that when you're flying back towards the landing you're getting more and more air beneath you you're gaining attitude above ground but this guy decided to go for the points he can get and that's it and he didn't even make it to the points but still okay so I see then people walking which means the other guy that was slow in the trees ended up somewhere behind the trees that will be fun and then the others are still fighting so what happened is that a layer of alto cumulus clouds covered the sun a bit and that killed all those few thermals that were here you can see on the horizon there are now nice cumulus clouds building which means the ground beneath them is uh, directly illuminated by the sun but we are now uh, under a cloud cover 
and we barely have any thermals. I see another one landing. He also didn't make it to the point. This is intense, so you have to have a really strong will and believe in yourself and your plane that you can do this. I guess you can get this by years and years of diligent practice. But after my three year break due to pandemic, I lost much of this confidence. So in a terrain like this, I prefer to play it safe. I think I only did two flights out of six that went beyond this tree line to the north and that was only when I had enough height uh, that I was able to return back uh, into the wind. So we mostly had wind between east and south directions variable uh, sometimes it was more easterly, sometimes it was from southeast. So it was always uh, this tree line that was like a tempting place to, to look for thermals. Still, if you're out of practice, then this kind of flying is not joy, it's a stressful thing to do. So four planes are really high now, I guess these guys will be among the winners and two are still struggling. Don't know about the rest. So one crashed, one went down behind the hill, behind the trees, two landed. That's four, and then it's four high, and one, two, three, that I see, I think I'm missing some planes, wherever they are. Okay, so something's now happening uh, actually in front of the tree line. Looks like this will be a thermal that will save these two guys. Because one is the third one is now already landing. Although he's trying there something, but I'm not sure if that will work. He just barely reached the landing point. Okay. And we have, what, five minutes to go, right? So there's again Bert joining the 
high planes. It's always nice to see that we're able to show the birds who's the master of the sky around here. Yeah, five minutes to go. This low guy here almost looks like it's, he's refusing to climb because the other guy now managed to, to climb out nicely. But this guy prefers to suffer here down low. Not my kind of fun. But he is persistent. I must give him that. Although it now looks like he's giving up. Good there. Come on, turn, turn. Yes. Very nice. Now this will probably be enough for the remaining time. just when he was about to give up. That's what a dynamic terrain like this can give you. Okay, so these two guys found their plane in time, which is good. So I think they had a decent idea of where to look for it. Okay, nicely done. A really nice reward for those 10 minutes of suffering. But now it's time to go to land. You always have to land just when you found a good thermal, right?
Okay, the desertion of loss. So I don't know if there will be a third flight or not. Let's wait a bit and see. Thirty seconds to the third flight. Let's see what happens now. So I guess the guys who made it uh, second round can now afford to go for a bit less stressful height. Well, I'll still have to compete. The uh, situation is similar as we had in the morning. Overcast, barely any heat coming through from the sun. And much less wind actually, at least out here. Someone pushed it to the max. Majority is here. Okay, why did he have like five seconds more motor runtime than the rest? Did he start late? happening here. This was interesting spot in the previous flight. And there are two planes already low. One is down in the valley. At least going down. I'm afraid that won't work. The other one also gave up, climbed out on motor power. Yeah, this one too. That's the same choice. In the meantime, someone's just above me, almost above me. Also playing it safe, as I did. But it doesn't look all that good. So there's more drama happening there in the trees. What are these two guys up to? Not much happening there at all. something not enough I see the one that's landing and I lost the other one. No idea where he went. Okay. So this one looks like he'll be landing too.
uh, guys that were just like maybe 20-30 meters higher from the start are already having fun. So maybe not the lowest one, but others for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They are here. One wants more fun by going back a bit toward the landing points, hoping maybe for another thermal. Not sure if that's a good idea, but wind is picking up, so something must have happened there. There's now a constant light breeze that wasn't there before, but I think it's this is better news for the guys that are up there. Not sure if this will be indicating that something's happening down here. But I now see two planes that are low and looking for a lift. Now you need patience and skill. You need to know how to fly your plane at minimum speed without stalling it in the turns. So every meter you lose counts a lot. But this guy is working it slowly and I think he's gaining. So I now see three planes high and far, two in the middle and two that are also coming back towards these two guys below. Okay, now this, this is a bit more aggressive turn. Looks like he got something better. And yes, I think sun is coming out. Very nice. So this is how persistence can pay off. It's a big bumblebee.
So more planes are now joining the same patch of sky. There's just one that's left far, no two, that are far and high. The others joined this terminal here. Two, four, six of them. At least six that I can see. And now there's just one that's remaining high and far and I think he's coming to this area too. So we'll have a whole group here soon. Although, what's this guy thinking? went pretty far into the wind. That's not entirely good idea. So if you have a thermal that's blown downwind, you better stick with it. Because it's pretty sure that in front of this thermal into the wind there will be a downdraft. And this is what's happening now. He's thinking. Now say it's very unlikely that he will find another thermal, especially at, from this height. Uh, so that was his bad decision of this flight. How much do we still need to have? Maybe about three minutes or so. But look, he got something. That will be just enough. The rest of them are also now going home for the landing pattern. Let's see, okay, okay. He got it. That was good luck, I would say. Not something you can rely on.
Okay, let's see who made it to the podium now. So now we start the Thanksgiving ceremony. We are glad we managed to complete six rounds with so many pilots. Even if the forecast was so bad, we were lucky with the, with the weather at the end. So we hope you enjoyed, you had a good time. And the question uh, is, anybody has some protest? No. All good. Tak ještě před vyhlášením bych chtěl poděkovat všem lidem, co se podíleli na organizaci soutěže a časoměřičům, výpočetním ústředním spůl rodině Lžíčařové, které pracovali bezchybně, obsluze bufetu, Vaškovi, startérovi, holkám, co donášeli lístky, Zuzka s Elčou a všem... Thanks to ladies to collecting the... And then we would like to thanks to all volunteers like timekeepers, our starter ladies in the shop, in the buffet, and and the Lichichas family for for the results counting and all sponsors who helped us with the organization of this competition. <laughs> and now we can start with the prize giving. Nyní začneme s předáním cen. Jako první budou vyhodnoceny ženy. <laughs> the third place in ladies is Charm Mahmoudi from Germany. Hey. <laughs> On the second place, Anne Janser from Germany. Tady za náma, tamhle ho máte. Aha, i tam to, kdo je to? Ne, mu říkali oranžový. Říká před karavanem. Jo, před karavanem. 
Nyní budeme pokračovat v kategorii 65 plus seniori. Now we are continue with the, with the category 65 plus. On the third place is Conny Uvesta from Norway. <laughs> from Norway. <laughs> <laughs> you want to borrow a sweater? <laughs> Change the shirt. <laughs> On the second place, Gilles Bishop from France. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And the winner of this category is Peter Hoffman from Austria. And now we continue with the juniors category and we would like to ask all juniors to come to us. So on the eighth place, Mitri Kimosefs from Latvia. Oh, there he's Come coming. on! And the winner is first place, 